Look, very rarely do you see um, managers now um, have the, the you know, co co jobs because that's what it would have to be um, in in that particular instance, Sean. That you're, you're saying, uh, look, David Moyes has done a, a wonderful job, hasn't he, with with West Ham uh, last season? It looks as if he's going to build on that again this season. Funny thing you you find with coaches, especially at national team level, is is they love it when they're involved, but they actually miss the day to day, uh, which is takes them back to clubland. Yeah. Uh, but look, David Moyes obviously uh, is a fantastic manager. Um, had had such a long time in the game. Uh, I'm not sure whether at <clears throat> this moment in time, the sacking of uh, Clark would be a positive thing for Scotland. How do you evaluate Simon? Uh, Stevie Clark's success or otherwise in the job because obviously he's become a national hero by leading Scotland to our first ever major finals in 23 years. Yep. You can't take that away from him. But when you look at it in terms of bare results, it's not been too spectacular. I mean, you know, you can look at two penalty shootouts that, yep. that, it, that it took to actually qualify us for the, the finals. Where have been the big results for Stevie Clark? I think getting us there. There's real games. Also. That that is a result. I think that's yeah, that's well, the result. That is. You know, and it lifts everybody. The whole nation get a lift from that. We got such a big buzz from being in the Euro finals uh, and and watching the three games. That's everything after so many years not qualifying for these finals. So he's got, you've got to take your hat off to that. Uh, it's a frustrating one, Scotland, for me because I've harped on about long enough, Rob, about being good enough and having players that are good enough and at times we watch as recent as England the game against England I thought we went toe to toe with England probably the better team on the night and then we fall short in the Croatia game and the following game albeit we miss Billy Gilmore again it goes back to we're not a good enough team to afford to lose our best players but then I watched the first half last night and I think you know from from thinking that we are, we're close you know, it's almost out of reach at times. Last night, that first 45, it looked as if we were way off it. Mm. Uh, and it just leaves us with a must-win game at the, at the weekend against Moldova and probably a must-win against Austria as well to get any chance of uh, qualification. But I think, I don't know, I don't think it'd be the right answer to get rid of Steve Clark just now, mid-campaign. Uh, we've got two important games coming up. Mm. Let's see how we go on in them. I, I just think, Sean, I'd be interested in, like, your thoughts as well. Um, yeah. When, when Scotland have their backs to the wall, uh, and we just touched, so in terms of where they stand currently within the, the group, that's backs to the wall. Uh, for me, um, I think this is probably a time when we can see the, the best out of Scotland in terms of um, knowing that you've got to go out. Draws are not enough. You've got to yeah. go out and win football matches. So for me, that means straight away you've got Dykes and you've got Shea Adams. Then you start working your way back because you've got to win football matches. What's your thoughts on that, Sean? I, I agree, man, but it's like certain things, like, I don't know what it does not play Nismet for, I think Nismet is, is a good Scottish player coming through, and mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it seems to play too many players out of position, and then changes them about and all that, and I don't think that's right. But and Nisbet, I, Nisbet wasn't in the squad, Nisbet had pulled no, out. No, was in the squad, yeah, I agree. Yeah. I, I mean... But I think he needs to be in the squad. Yeah, I get your frustration completely, Sean, but, um, yeah. you know... You, your point, I guess, is you're writing off this qualification campaign. You're you're saying we cannot, we will not do it. So change the manager. Um, but it's 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 not dead yet. I mean, if Scotland beat Moldova and win in Austria, I mean that. I mean, I do like I've got a chance against Austria. No, but no, but I Rob, I think Austria will take about three or four passes. So. And I, and I guess you're you're using as evidence the the two all draw with Austria mm. at Hamden, yeah. in which Scotland I guess struggled to get a point. Simon out of that. Yeah, it's, it's, these are going to be difficult games. Even Moldova at home isn't going to be easy. But they're both. We have to win them now. We've put ourselves in a situation where we have to win them. It's an interesting point that you're making, Craig. Yeah, when it's back to the wall because that was our best performance at the the finals against mm. England down at Wembley, when we're kind of back to the wall. We weren't mm. the favourites, and us being Scots expecting to beat the Czechs and Cro Croats at Hamden. Now, yeah, it was a great chance for us to go and get results there, but there were also no mugs. These teams, I think the Czechs mm -hmm. put Holland out, Croats went deep into the competition as well. So it's a funny one, but I just it's a frustrating one because I think we have got the players. Uh, are we without McGinn for the next couple of games? Is that... I think there are question Nobody marks knows. over quite quite a few players in terms of who's going to who's gonna come back in. Yeah, yeah. Look, it just... Uh, 
it reminds me so much of of the Australian thing as well. It was like we got so close, um, performed when people didn't think you could yeah. go and uh, get a result and all that sort of stuff. And it, it, Scotland for me, the same, when there's an expectation that you should go and win a football match, Scotland struggle. Yeah. When there's that pressure is not on you to, 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 to be the, the favourites or, or you can see the goal and all of a sudden you have to they chase a game, perform, yeah. you can see how well Scotland can, can play. So in terms of the players that Scotland have, they've got players that can play and are playing at the top, top level. So I don't know, it's it's a difficult one to, to kind of really understand whether it's a mindset, whether it's a mentality um, going into these matches. But that's what has to change for me, for Scotland to really be able to um, keep playing at the highest level and, and keep qualifying for major tournaments. Should Stevie Clark have changed midway through the first half to what he did at half time, Simon? I mean, I know there was no further damage incurred on the back of the, the first 15 minutes, but but... It certainly looked likely at that point. We were taking yeah. a big risk, were we? Continuing with I think that it's a, same I think that's shape. also a difficult one so early in the game. You know, you've obviously did your prep and you've got your team shape there. It's alien to Alan, uh, Andy Robertson to be playing on the right. It takes away a lot of his effective play. Uh, so a kind of makeshift backline. And what but, he did, what he did as well was, I mean, he, you know, he was playing both Robertson and Tierney out yeah, of their normal yeah, position yeah, yeah. at, at wing back. Whereas, um, if he, you know, if he'd done what he did second half, you've got Ryan Fraser at right wing back. Yep. Um, you've got Keenan Tierney on the left side of a three, and you've got Andy Robertson at left wing back, and yeah. and it just seemed more comfortable, didn't it? It seemed more comfortable, but with that Rob as well, it's actually more attacking in my opinion mm. as well, yeah. you know, whereas I think the other way you're still thinking, okay, but defensively you might have to do a bit of work. So therefore, whether it was Tierney, it was Robertson this time. Mm. Um, I so think I think it's been the same with even playing Tierney on the right before. I know he, I know he's done it. And in a Peter, four. Yeah, you take your hat off to, to Andy as well, the captain, taking responsibility. Yeah. Maybe it was put out there and he says, you know, I'll go and do that job. But it does take away, as you say as well, going forward. It's no yeah. natural to them to be playing on that side of the pitch. Yeah. And, we, and like I said, it's one of those ones. We've all, we've, you would have been in the position, I was certainly in that uh, situation as well, where you just want to do your best for the team. Yeah. Um, so you, 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 know, you go and you play and you play out of position, although you know it's probably not suited to your qualities. Mm. Um, so again, this is nothing against Robertson, you know, because no. he, he, he just, you know, he, he was in a position that wasn't uh, comfortable for him. But I mean, it's, it's easy to say that, well, it's the right side, it's the same as the left, but it's completely different. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, we're talking about feet here and yeah. the way he moves and what's inside him. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I think it would be interesting to know what he thinks privately uh, today. It's natu natural on that left side. Many times uh -huh. you watch yeah. him and him just yeah. bombing forward. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's natural. It, it does take away because, uh, the uh, effectiveness I mean, of, of, of his play. Tell Alexa to launch Go Radio or listen on the Go Radio app.